Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 4th. It's September, my goodness. Beautiful day, a little bit cloudy, gonna rain tomorrow, who cares, today's great. Uh, had, a, had a great morning and uh, looking forward to sitting down here and having a chat with y'all, as we used to say in, in Atlanta. Ah, so, I got something unusual in my hand today. You don't often see me with one of these, mainly because I only own one of these. <laughs> this is a Meerschaum, Meerschaum Billiard. Uh, it's a no-name. Got it, gosh, 10, 12 years ago, maybe. Maybe longer than that. Uh, got it very inexpensively. Um, it was secondhand, lightly smoked, and... Uh, I got it inexpensively because the stem was not properly clocked, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about that. But anyway, this pipe has been in my rotation, so to speak, for 10, 12 years at least, and I probably smoke it once or twice a year at the most, and it's usually because I talk to somebody that's a you know, real fan of Meerschaum pipes. So my buddy Jack, he, he loved his Meerschaum pipes, uh, armchair piper Ed. Uh, enjoys his Meerschaum pipes and of course there's other folks that I, I hear talking about them all the time and I'll say oh gee I'm missing something I'll pull it out and say like, yeah this just isn't doing it for me I don't like this pipe okay I've, I've never liked it uh, first time I smoked it I said this is not a good pipe um, of course that's mostly me but you know the pipe had some problems so I decided um, I'm, I'm doing this thing where I'm going to try to smoke my least smoked pipes just to either get to know them better or to decide to have them leave the uh, the fold, the collection. No, oh, no, oh, the gathering, sorry. So I, I, I took this pipe out and I smoked it and uh, smoked it with Haunted Bookshop. I know Haunted Bookshop well and it just was awful, terrible experience. I don't think I finished the bowl. So I said, okay, look, I, I know a little bit about how pipes work, so I'm going to see if I can fix this. So the, the pipe has a couple of problems. The biggest problem was that it had a really tight draw, and I mean really tight. Um, I could not get a pipe cleaner through without really fighting it. I had to use one of those dill or a church warden pipe cleaner, you know, really thin, fine one to get in there. Um, the airway down in the shank was less than an eighth of an inch. So this was not a easy to smoke pipe uh, from from airway points of view. Some folks like a tight airway. Some folks like a wide open airway. I'm I'm on the wide open end of things. It's personal preference, but when you get one that's this tight, something has to be done. Uh, the stem is as is often the case in Meerschaum pipes. And while I only own this one, I've worked on a lot of them, and I've never seen a Meerschaum pipe that had a nice stem. They've got ornate stems, but they're lousy in terms of their engineering and their comfort. So this is this is a really thick cross section here. I don't know if that's going to show up well, but it just doesn't feel good in my mouth. It's not, and it was very very tight uh, draw in terms of the the airway diameter. The other problem with this is that it was not clocked, as I said, and I can usually fix that. Um, this is a screw in tenon and usually there's a receiver in this end that you can adjust or it might be screwed directly into the Meerschaum which it is in this case then this is usually uh, threaded in and epoxied and you get a little bit of play there uh, this doesn't have that option um, I don't know how this is put in I'm guessing that it's epoxied in uh, just roughed up and epoxied in but I have not been able to break that epoxy bond and, and rotate this at all so what you can see I've done there is I've got a little uh, washer that's actually made out of either index card or business card, I forget which. And that just allows me to stop this from overclocking and get it you know, relatively straight. Now I can fix it. There are ways that I can, I can get it relatively straight. You know, I can drill that out and put a new uh, screw-in tenon in there. Uh, I just don't want to do that. I, I don't got time for that. So. <laughs> So those are problems I haven't fixed, okay? The, 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 the bite zone is just too, too thick, and it also domes, which makes it very uncomfortable. 
and the, the stem doesn't clock, but I, I kind of jury rigged something. All right, what I could fix was first off the airway through the shake. So I'm going to show you the tools I used in case you ever want to take this on on your own. I have this series of shank reamers here, and these run, I've got them labeled because I can never remember the darn, uh, darn number. So the smallest one I believe is 964ths. Yeah, 964ths. So 864ths is 4 30 seconds, which would be two sixteenths, which would be one eighth. So this is slightly above one eighth of an inch. And then they go up in, in increments there. So there is an, um, so it's nine sixty fourths. The next one is 10 fourths, which is of course five thirty seconds. And then the last one is 11 fourths. So they go up in 64th of an inch increments. And I find that almost all pipes, uh, one of these will work to ream the airway. And I just made these out of, you know, the wooden handles. There's drill bits glued in there. I did use bread point drill bits because that's what I had on hand at the time. Don't do that because if you go too far, you're going to jab into the bowl of the pipe. So try to try to use just regular twist drills if you make these. But they're just wooden handles that I turned on a lathe and epoxied in the, the, uh, the drills. So this is what I use if I'm working on a pipe where the airway is caked and i got to get that cake out. But I can also use it to open the airway. And that's what I did. I started off with the uh, 964, which again is just slightly above an eighth of an inch, 164th of an inch. And I was getting white meerschaum coming out with that. So that gives you an idea of how tight this airway was. I went all the way up to 11 64ths because that's what I like. So I opened up the airway in the shank. Down here, I wound up going through a series of, of things that I often do on pipes that aren't behaving well. So first I use the uh, taper drill bit to actually drill into the stem and I drilled to about that level to avoid you know any problems with potentially breaking through the, the thinner part of the but you know I went into about there so that opened up this part of the airway and um, a, a allowed it to be funneled to further help, I used a little countersink on the very end of the tenon just to put a little funnel on that to again improve the airflow. And then I started working on the um, funneling of the airway at the bite zone or the bit, the button. And when, when I first put this in, it just went flat in and I couldn't move it at all. Now you can see I've got some side to side movement. So I funneled that out. This is just a little wire saw that you can get from Vermont Freehand. I funneled that as far as I could to try to get it to meet up with that new um, airway that I drilled. And then I went through, um, where's this? It's just a modified needle file that I used to sort of smooth things out. A diamond file that I used to further smooth things out inside the airway. And then sandpaper. So the inside of this pipe is now as good as I can get it and you know what the way I think it should have been made in the first place so this should be a well smoking pipe the outside I can't do anything about the well I could thin down the mouthpiece but I don't want to <laughs> it's just more work than I would put into this so there we have it that is the smoke well the process I just described to you did an amazing job of improving the quality of, of the smoking of this pipe. It behaves beautifully now. It, it's night and day difference. Uh, this smokes, I can smoke this pipe as easily and as comfortably and as consistently as any other pipe I own. So that's good. So it was all engineering problems. The problem is it's still a meerschaum. Uh, it just, you know, it's just bland. It doesn't change from bowl to bowl. You don't you don't get any seasoning of the briar. You don't you don't get cake. It, it just it's always exactly the same. And if that's what you want in a pipe, buy uh They're wonderful, I'm sure. I don't want that in a pipe. I love the fact that briar changes over time, and I love the fact that after I have a pipe for ten or fifteen years, it suddenly is just my pipe, and we've been together and it's my friend and it smokes the way I remember it smoking 
This just isn't like that. This is like... It's like a fake friend. It, it's all, it never changes with you. It's always the same. Kind of like a clay pipe is. And, you know, clay pipes have their place. But I wouldn't want to smoke clay pipes exclusively. And I wouldn't want to smoke meerschaum pipes exclusively. Other things I don't like about them. I mean, the, the stems are terrible uh, across the board. Uh, this, this coloring thing. So you can see I've got some coloring here. And, you know, people get all excited about that. Uh, guys, that's, that's the juice and gunk that you would normally take out with a pipe cleaner. Uh, because the meerschaum is so porous, it seeps into the bowl over time. Uh, yeah, I guess it looks nice. But You ever notice that they always color around the shank and the shank bowl junction first? which is exactly where you put your pipe cleaner to soak up the gunk. Yeah, don't like meerschaum. But this pipe is at least one that I can smoke now. So my opinion, there are people out there that love their meerschaum pipes and, and enjoy them, and I hope they continue to enjoy them for many, many years. And I hope that if you would like to try a meerschaum pipe and you try one and you like it, that you go on to enjoy them. Me, I'm going to stick with Briar. So... Fireside Chat, Ken Byron Ventures Fireside Chat, uh, made in collaboration with Merchant Service Pipes. If you're not familiar with Merchant Service Pipes, they uh, make pipes. That, not not my thing, but uh, they, I think it's MerchantServicePipes.com, uh, and you know people love them, so check them out. Fireside Chat is uh, Ken Byron. Oh, here it is. It is MerchantServicePipes.com, so you can you can go to that website and I'll. Hopefully you can see that below fireside chat there. Ken Byron Ventures, interesting. Uh, Ken Byron's an interesting fellow. I don't know much about him. I believe a lot of his blending is actually done with components that are obtained from um, other tobacco companies. So he's not using raw leaf. He's using uh, like Virginia Flakes and things like that to do his blending. But I don't know that for sure. I've had a few of his blends, and they've been interesting. This one uh, was kindly given to me at the Ohio Pipe Show by my friend Eric the Blue Collar, Pipe Smoker. And Eric was very excited about it uh, for reasons that will become obvious if you know Eric. And let's just say, I've, I've had about four bowls of this. And when you open it up, you're smelling... It's it's like Carter Hall half and half uh, Prince Albert. Like somebody took those and distilled them down and and this is Ken Byron's take on an American classic uh, codger blend, if you will, uh, which I believe he calls a brown and tan blend. I think. Or maybe it was gold and tan. I, I can't remember. Look at his website. Look up Fireside Chat. You can get the lowdown. Uh, the idea being that it's Burley in Virginia, and a little and, and topping. You know, it is an aromatic, and this is an aromatic blend. This is um, sort of. And I'm going to load the pipe up as I as I talk. And this, by the way, is a very very nice ribbon cut. So loads very easily. A little moist, but nothing I can't smoke. Uh, it is a homage to things like Carter Hall, Half and Half, uh, Prince Albert, but some of these classic American uh, Burley Virginia blends, Burley Ford Virginia plus Virginia blends. Uh, I believe on his website he says that you know the the, the golden tan or brown and tan. I'm sorry, I can't remember which it was. Uh, were blends before they started adding heavy aromatic components and a lot of black Cavendish, which often is used to carry the aromatic components. So it's, it's you know, before that era. And I think he's done a pretty good job in hitting the mark on that. So... When I load Fireside Chat and draw through it, which I don't often do, but I just did it accidentally as I was trying to close the bag, 
you get a very distinctive um, marshmallow chocolate flavor off of this. That's what the topping is, um, and you can you can smell that. Uh, but there's other you know, the tobacco is there too when you when you smell it in the pouch. Um, I neglected to bring my lighter down, so today we're going to be using Marilyn with the sparker. And let me get this lit before I waste all your Sunday. So yeah, we we get the topping is definitely cocoa. And uh, there's some vanilla, one Q-ish kind of flavor in there. And for me, <laughs> excuse me, for me, it is just slightly overdone. I think there's a little bit too much of the topping on this. But that's my palate. It's not a critique of the blend. I'm just saying I would prefer less. Now, there's an interesting thing that happens with this. I've noticed it in every bowl, and this is this is no exception. As that topping burns off, as it often does with aromatics, and you start to get the tobacco, that burley comes in, and you know, often burley is sort of to the nutty side. Um, I think that might have to do with the toasting. Uh, this is lightly toasted burley, and it is just unbelievably woody uh, to the point where it's almost like somebody put some sawdust in the pipe. <laughs> Again, that, I'm just talking about that, that particular flavor note. I'm not trying to say that the blend tastes like sawdust, but it's a very woody burley. And there's a fair amount of Virginia. I think he used red Virginia. And I think it's mature red Virginia. Nothing sharp, nothing tart in this. Yeah. So. I like it. I mean, it's, I, I, I said on Instagram, it was like Carter Hall on steroids. The one negative, uh, other than there being too much topping, in my opinion, but that's just a taste thing. But the one negative is that it's got a little bit of that McBaron honey kind of feel to it. And it makes my tongue a little unhappy. It's not tongue bite, it's that if you keep smoking me, you're going to have tongue bite kind of feeling that I get from when I'm stupid enough to try a McBaron blend. I'm talking about McBaron, not McBaron AGH. The AGH blends are all good tobacco and, and not topped. So, that's the one negative. It's a very smooth easy smoking and, and um, comfortable blend. I mean, this is something that I could imagine really enjoying. Not just, you know, normally these blends, people say, a oh, morning cup of coffee kind of thing. But this would be a nice blend, blend to have when you're just trying to relax in the evening, maybe listen to some music. It's just smooth, it's not, it's not overly complex, and it just, it's enjoyable. So, 
So, where did I put the tobacco? How did I? Oh, here it is. How did I lose this? So, it's Fireside Chat. Does he have his website here? KBVEN.com. That's Ken Byron Ventures. KBVEN.com. Fireside Chat. I think it's two ounces is like twelve or thirteen dollars. Comparable to what you pay for a tin. Comes in this nice resealable mylar bag. I've had three or four of his blends now. Um, yeah, I, either because people gave me samples or because I bought them. And yeah, this is the best one I've had, without question. This is the best one of his blends that I've had. Oh yeah, my opinion. This is this is impressions. This isn't a review. I don't do reviews. So I will enjoy this um, without question. Thank you, Eric. I, I do appreciate the gift and the opportunity to try it. I probably never would have uh, thought to buy this on my own. So uh, I appreciate that. I will enjoy this. I will not buy any more because of the topping. Uh, but that's a personal thing. As far as this pipe goes, I'll continue to smoke it. Not very often. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna be my go to for anything. Not because it doesn't perform well, but because I just can't get the same relationship with this pipe that I can get. Sorry, the, the furnace decided to chime in. I think I was saying that I'm, I'm probably not going to be smoking this much just because I can't have the same kind of relationship with this pipe that I can have with a briar pipe. Just me. All right, I think this was running a bit long, but I'll give you a quick shop update. I completed the dust collecting for the lathe and the sanding station yesterday. Got these Magport connectors, which are wonderful. Uh, check out my Instagram page if you want to see pictures of that and you want to see the sander running uh very happy that's done and uh yeah we're we're gonna be organized <laughs> so that's all good um pretty much same old same old week ahead hope you all enjoy your labor day holiday tomorrow if you're celebrating labor day uh, which i think is probably a u.s thing uh, I'm going to use it to do some more work down here unless the missus decides that I'm going to go for a drive or you know, whatever. We shall see. So, thanks to the furnace, I'm getting to the bottom of the bowl of this. And I think I've kept you from your Sunday long enough. So with that, I will say that... Uh, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.